So in this video lecture, we will be looking at downloading and installing the ZMAC schema that we are going to use further in this course for writing our SQL statements and to learn about SQL. So again, a quick review, we have talked about two types of SQL statements. One is DDL, data definition language, and then we have the data manipulation language. So SQL for data definition, these are some of the common statements, which includes create. This is used to create the database objects. We have alter, that's used to change characteristics of the database object. We have drop, that's used to delete the database object. And we have truncate, that's used to delete the table data while keeping the metadata part of the table. So again, I want to point our attention to the W3 schools, which I'm going to open. And again, this is your default page and you're going to see this navigation pane that provides you with an explanation on most of all the SQL syntax statements that we are going to use in this course. And um, pretty much this is going to give you an intermediate knowledge level on SQL. So um, keep this as a reference point as we keep moving forward. Um, so we are going to the SQL create table. This is the syntax for it because we need to understand the syntax for every statement that we are writing. Uh, we have create and then we are going to say table. Then we are going to give the table name. Remember, we are going to give the table a name that is associated with the data that we are keeping track of. We have this open bracket and then we are going to um, give the names of the column. Um, name, the data type, and some optional constraints if we're going to have them. And then we end our SQL statement by closing this paragraph and we have a semicolon as well. So if you come into your W3 schools link here, and if we keep navigating net down, we're going to see this is the area where most of all the SQL data definition language statements are. So if you click on SQL um, create table here, it's going to show you again the syntax. It gives an explanation here. And there's also an example for you to look at and what it does for you. So always again, you can resort here um, and come here and look for further references and learning. But this is the create table. As we are going to start learning SQL, we are going to start by writing data modification language statements because they're more straightforward. We will cover the data um, definition language a little bit later um, and then we have the SQL insert, um, which we're going to you also use, and we, we'll see that in the script. And insert is a data modification language. Don't confuse it thinking it's a data definition language, because what SQL insert does is once you have created your table and defined the attributes, insert is used to populate the tables with values. And so this is the syntax for insert. As you can see, it says insert into, and then we give the table name. Remember, we have to name it the exact name that we give for the table. We're going to list the columns, and then we have a values keyword here, and then you're going to list the values that we want to populate into our table. There are two formats for the insert statement. If we only want to populate certain columns, we can use this format. But if we know all the values for the table columns that we're going to populate, we can just say insert into table name values, and then we list all the values. Remember that it's going to insert each value in the order that we create the table. So when we create the table, if our first field is customer ID, this value one is going to give customer ID that particular value that we list here. So again, coming back to our W3 schools here, you're going to see the SQL insert into here. And the syntax is again given for you here with an explanation. And we also have a demo database here that you can work and as well as look at some of the examples here. It's important that you understand the difference between insert into with the column specified versus insert into with just the table name. And as we move forward, we will practice on using some insert into statements later on. So as a first step now, I have given you the scripts for you to download for the ZMAC database. Um, and you're going to find the scripts in the D2L SQL folder. It's called ZMAC create model and ZMAC data. So these are two separate scripts. The first script is going to create the database structure and the ZMAC data script is going to insert or populate the data with values. So when you download these from D2L, keep in mind that it's most likely going to be zip 
files for you that D2L downloads to your computer. So if it's a zip file, it's very important for you to unzip the file when it's downloaded to your computer so that you can open the file that has been unzipped and then we are going to work on running the scripts on it. So we are first going to um, down open the ZMAC create model script in MySQL Workbench and then we are going to run that script and then we are going to open the ZMAC data script and then we are going to run that. So I'm going to walk you through the steps of logging into Workbench and opening the script that has been downloaded to your computer from D2L. So this is my SQL workbench that I've brought in and logged in. Again, as a first step, it's always good to check your server status. And in this case, my server status is up and running. So that is an initial prerequisite for us to ensure. And then you're going to see this query tab open here. And um, you can actually open a script in this editor or you can come to file and also you can open an SQL script from there. So I'm going to go ahead and with um, my query tab open here. I'm going to say open a script in this editor and then this is where I have downloaded my script. I've unzipped the file here and as I'm going to open the first script that I have which says ZMAC create model and I'm going to click on open and when I do that I'm going to have this SQL statement here which is to create my schema, create the table, Please do not make any changes to the script. You can quickly review it. Um, we will learn a little bit later about writing some commands for creating the table. But at this point, our goal is to run the script here. Um, so I'm going to come to my edit and I'm going to select all to ensure that the entire script has been selected. And then I can come here and there is this um, lightning flash symbol that says execute the selected portion of the script. I can click there and when I do that under your action output window, you're going to see a couple of green check marks, which means that the scripts have run successfully on my server. So I can close this tab here. I can refresh my schema and you should see the ZMAC database schema here created for you. And if you expand on the tables, you're going to see that we have, as discussed, the customer, order item, orders, products, and supplier. So I'm just going to quickly open that same script that I opened. Remember, you cannot run the script twice because if you try to do that, you're going to have duplicate table names and SQL doesn't let that because that's one of the relational characteristics. We cannot have duplicate names. But I just wanted to walk through what was done. This is your create statement that has been run for creating the customer table. And as you can see, it's create table, the name of the table, and then we define our fields, um, the data types, and any optional constraints. Not null means that you cannot have a missing value for this field. So for example, first name and last name are required to have a value in it. So when you define not null, you're telling that if someone tries to populate this table with values, they cannot leave the customer ID first name or last name as missing or blank values. The rest could be, but ideally in a table, we want to stay as much as possible away from having missing values. And so the same applies here. You can see that we define the primary key using this constraint keyword here. The order table has a foreign key in it. So you're going to see that in addition to the primary key constraint, we also have a foreign key constraint that we have added here. So I'm going to, you can review this, but again, you can close it and remember not to double run the script because it will give you an error. So now that I've created my table structure here, if I come and click on customer and click on the spreadsheet symbol, you're going to see that none of these tables have any values in them. So our next goal is that we are going to open the script to populate these tables with values. So I'm going to come up to my, again, you can use here or you can come here and open a script and I'm going to pick the ZMAC data SQL file here. And when I do that, you're going to see this as a script. Again, do not make any changes, but it doesn't hurt to look at it. As you can see, it is populated with insert into statements and pretty much it's going to insert into the table customer all these values that we have here. It's going to do that for the product orders and all the other tables that we have here. Also keep in mind that each SQL statement ends with a semicolon. So that's also important to keep in mind. 
I'm going to come to my edit and I'm going to select all because we want to make sure that the entire script is selected. You don't want to miss out on anything. And then I'm going to come and click on this um, lightning execute the selected portion. And when I do that, you're going to see these green checks. It's going through every single statement here and running it. And you're going to see a green check because this doesn't have a syntax error. You already have a schema called ZMAX. So it's important to first run the script to create it because if you run this without that, it's going to give you errors everywhere saying there's no CMAC um, schema, there's no customer table. So it's important that we do that. So now we can close the script tab here. We can come and refresh. Okay, this is our refresh button because we're just sending it, refreshing a new fresh load from the server. Now, if I come to my customer table and click on the spreadsheet symbol here, I will see that my data in the tables have been populated. And you can do that for every single table that you have here. You're going to see that there are values that are populated in each of the table. And keep in mind, this is a result of the script that we just ran. So this is an important step to complete because going forward, we're going to learn how to write SQL statements on the ZMAC schema.